Hey guys, Dr. Devin Coglin here with Revolution Chiropractic Health Center. And I want to go over something with you today that a lot of us never think about until after the fact. And what it is, is actually the four things that happen to your baby when they're born in a hospital now in, in, in America. Um, the first thing I want to talk to you about that a lot of us have never thought about is actually clamping and cutting the cord. It's something that we've kind of just, we've kind of been, I guess, led to believe that it's, it's the normal thing now, whereas the World Health Organization actually not does actually not recommend doing this right away. They actually want to let the cord pulse for at least three minutes up to 10 minutes. So the first thing that happens here that we want to be aware of is clamping of the umbilical cord. The reason that's such a problem is because that blood coming from the mother's placenta is still loaded with stem cells, iron-rich blood, and nutrients for the baby. And so when the baby is allowed to actually have that blood pulse for anywhere, you know, for a couple minutes all up to 10 minutes, they're getting all this extra stuff. You know, people will literally pay thousands of dollars for stem cells and they'll rob their baby of it in that initial crucial time period. So we want to make sure we let the, the cord pulse until it's done pumping the rest of that um, iron rich and stem cell rich blood into the baby's body. The second thing that happens that most of us aren't aware of is that the doctors, or I'm sorry, the nurses would be putting antibiotics in the baby's eyes. Now, a lot of people say, well, you know, why would they do that? And the reason they do that is hospital policy. Because even if the mother tests negative for gonorrhea or chlamydia, you know, sexually transmitted diseases, it's hospital policy that they want to cover the whole blanket and make sure that every single child gets antibiotics in their eyes. Now, if you look at the stats on this, it's extremely low rates of any kind of um, eye infection resulting of exposure to an STD. But simply, we just need to know, does the mom have these? And if the mom doesn't have chlamydia or gonorrhea, then why are we doing it? You know, it's another one of those things the World Health Organization has looked at. And they're not really finding the benefit across the board. So again, I would, I would recommend that you, that you avoid putting antibiotics in your child's eyes. You're automatically from day one uh, ruining the, that normal gut, good bacteria in their body. The third thing that's going to happen here is going to be a vitamin K shot. And now this is another one that's quite controversial. And now when a child is born, they're born with very low levels of vitamin K. Now, we know that's not abnormal because every single baby is born with low levels of vitamin K. So why, why is it that in America we treat it as though it's some sort of illness? You know, have you ever thought about that? When infants are born, they get a, a dose that's 20,000 times the dose of an adult that would get a vitamin K in a daily, in a daily um, dose. And what they're getting, they're actually getting a synthetic vitamin K that's accompanied by a number of carcinogenic ingredients like polysorbate 80 and propylene glycol. These are known cancer-causing chemicals that are given to our babies right at birth. Now you say, well, why are they getting a vitamin K injection? And the reason why is vitamin K is one of the crucial ingredients that helps our blood clot. So you know, as you know, uh, the birth of a baby can be a somewhat traumatic experience. And so you know, to try to prevent bleeding on the brain or any kind of internal hemorrhage, vitamin K is given uh, prophylactically to try to prevent that. Now, again, I would question that practice, and I would also recommend doing it differently if you were to do it. You can actually get oral vitamin K drops that you can give to the baby that's much more normal. It's going through their digestive system, and they're not getting the cancer-causing ingredients um, that the injection includes. Also, if you look at the stats on vitamin K, um, there's extremely, extremely low chance of your child having any kind of you know, hemorrh hemorrhagic bleeding. You're talking like less than 0.00004%. Uh, when you're looking at this. So extremely, extremely rare. The fourth and last thing that happens to our children literally within 12 hours of being born is they receive their first vaccine, which is a hepatitis B vaccine that's given, you know, right around that window within a few hours of being born. Now, again, the question we have to ask is, why are we giving kids a hepatitis B vaccine at birth? You know, really their only exposure would be from their mother, which could easily be tested and we could know in advance, are they being exposed to, to uh, hepatitis B? Again, that vaccine has been linked to a number of serious side effects. Um, so again, unless your child is you know, exposed to some sort of drug use, um, and again, hepatitis B is a sexually transmitted disease, they're really not in harm's way. So again, we want to question the practice. Now, a lot of people might ask, well, what am I going to do? Do I have an option of avoiding these four things? And you do have options. You know, first and foremost, I'd recommend consider having an out-of-hospital birth. Um, the home birth, you're not going to have to worry about any of these things. Now that may not be for you, but if, if, if you want to have a hospital birth, but you're concerned about these things or, or even one of these things, I recommend having a birth plan that you can share with your, your, your healthcare provider. Also, I'd recommend that you hire a doula. 
And I recommend in this area in South Jersey, Jody the doula. Uh, Jody Green's an amazing resource for um, doula services, and she can help you, you know, kind of navigate the, the hospital um, and, and getting what you want for your child, not just getting what the hospital wants to give you. All right, so do your research, make sure that you understand these four things. They don't sneak up on you and you understand, you know, why they're given and that you exercise your right as a parent to decide if you want that. Uh, make sure you check out more videos, revolutionchiropracticnj.com or check out our Facebook page. If you go to facebook.com forward slash RCHC, this is Dr. Devin Coughlin uh, with your health tip.